Hey guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We know, we know you're watching it. We see the counts, but we see that half of you aren't subscribing. Yeah, just subscribe. It's easy, and you'll get a little message that we have the new show when they come out. Yep. Now, I know that the Patreon that we did just before, they were great. So good. Oh. So, and there's a mix. We did one amazing spooky story and then two other relationship ones, kind of spicy ones mm -hmm. that had some good combos come from, so from them. I would definitely su suggest if you haven't, uh, haven't done a Patreon, join Patreon, try it, see what you think. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that you'll stick by and get more of us on Patreon. For sure. And we look forward to seeing you. Yeah. Enjoy the episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's, mm. this week's, this one uh, episode of Father Knows Something. I would typically always look over to the handsome guy next to Morgan, but there is no handsome guy as he is busy doing other things this evening, getting ready for your trip, I would imagine. Yeah, we're headed to Minnesota. You go there a lot. I know. You guys will hear this and we'll already be back from Minnesota. We're recording on a Tuesday. We're back Monday. Quick trip. But I have a wedding venue I need to build now. So I have some meetings with the city to try to get things approved and an architect. And it's kind of a whole thing. Really? Are you going to take pictures and kind of lead people through what you're up to? I am. I'm going to kind of document the whole process. So really? yeah, I think it'll be really cool. I mean, not everyone has a family farm that they get to put a wedding venue on. What happens to all the things that I have upstairs in the barn? It's going to have to... It's a, I'm getting evicted. Yeah, it's going to have to get cleaned out. Can we uh, show everybody what I'm wearing today? You are wearing some very dirty pants and a pair of Oreo socks. Right. I was working before uh, doing my I think you got to hold, them, hold favorite, them up a little higher. Favorite volunteer work kind there of stuff. There you go. There but you go. But we have Oreos. And what do they not have? Uh, milk? No. Look at the toesies. Oh, they don't have holes. <laughs> look at the bottom of the, of the sock. Yeah. Pretty good. There you go. Okay. So this week's theme. We have a theme. We do have a theme and it's called reality check right now. That may change after. Maybe we have a better thing for it. But these are kind of just stories where they're asking these questions. But to us, it might just be so clear that like we need to like induce some reality to them. I don't want it to feel critical, though, or like we're being like tough love. We, or... We're a safe space. Yeah. Reality check is just honestly, it just seemed like a good title. But, but because you're a safe space, it doesn't mean you can't tell your, it's not like I wouldn't tell you, you know. Hey, I, your boyfriend's a piece of shit and you should probably dump him. Well, typically I always <laughs> let you figure that one out on your own over the years. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I don't think I ever said that about it. Well, the only one that I really didn't like was one, but I never even, I don't think I even commented on that one. Mm, I think you poked intelligent questions. I did. I, I, I was poking the bear a different way. Yeah. So maybe we'll have to do that today, but some of these might fire you up. There's one that really has me pissed off. So we'll see if you have the same well, I can visceral just, reaction. I can just let you get pissed off for me. I can mm -hmm. just channel it. Yeah. No, let's let's get a little wild today. Wild. Let's go. Wild, you say. Yeah. She says, let the lion loose. Let's do it. Is it the lion or a tiger? No, it's know, a lion. Whatever you identify with no, the most. No, it's a lion. I'm a lion. <laughs> MGM Studios. Mm. All right, let's go. Uh, let's reenact it. That, that can be the opening today. The MGM. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get started. <laughs> Now I'm going to be a horse for a week. No. I'm going to be a horse from doing a lion. No. Usually the lion eats the horse. Okay, up first. My throat hurts. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, Justin, and Sweet Holly. Long time listener here. Today I'm writing in because I'm having a kind of moral dilemma, I guess. My 23 female sister, 30 female, is mean to her kids. 11 female and 8 male. And I can't tell if I'm just being sensitive or or how to approach this topic. 
because it really makes me concerned for the mental health of my niece and nephew. Me and my sister have always been extremely close. We talk to each other about everything, and I'm very, very close with my niece and nephew. A few years ago, I moved away from home, but still remained close with her and her kiddos. Before I left, I had seen her being pretty harsh on the kids, who at the time were only six and three. When I say mean, I don't mean scolding or timeouts. I mean loudly yelling at the kids for making mistakes, spanking the kids, sometimes even in public, and even cussing at the kids. This bothered me even then, but I was young and worried about speaking out. Even now I'm worried about speaking out as we have a significant age difference and I have no children myself. I've been told by many of my friends who are parents that it's hard to take advice from someone who is child-free. Even if I've done extensive research in preparation for the day I do become a mother. After spending a few years apart, I recently visited her and as much as I love her, I witnessed some things that really hurt my heart. I did not see any spankings or physical punishments to the kids, but the way she communicates to them is the same. Aggressive speech, unnecessary constant threats of punishment for simple mistakes that kids make, cussing at the kids. This is extremely hard for me to handle, but again, I can't tell if I'm just being sensitive. As a child, our mom behaved very similarly with us, and it has caused me to actively fear my mother and created a very strained relationship between us for years. Truthfully, I worry that the way she's parenting will cause this for her and her kids. I know that being a mom is not an easy feat. I cannot talk to my mom about this as she doesn't see a problem with it, and my father is not in the picture. Should I even say anything to her about this? I have made previous comments about the kids' feelings, and I've been brushed off. Should I just mind my damn business? Any advice is appreciated. Thanks. So she gets unhinged. Yeah. Can you tell who needs the reality check in this situation? Can it's I, not our writer. I just want to be clear. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, I have um, certainly grown up around a lot of this. Mm -hmm. I can touch base with this. Yeah. And I will give you my experiences because that's why, that's why we're having this conversation. Let's go. So the reality is... Um, when you get to a part where child protective services need to get involved, where you have a chance of taking these kids out of their home to go somewhere different, that is where you can, you certainly, that, that's, that's a trigger where you have to pull when it gets to there. I don't know if you're there. You are there with a sister that is doing the exact same thing that your parents did. And she, in her mind and her programming says, this is, the way it works. I turned out okay, and my kids will turn out okay. I have nieces and nephews. I have a sibling that could certainly yell and scream at the top of uh, their their lungs. <laughs> um, probably listening to the show, so I won't identify him to him or her. But I certainly remember back when my nieces and nephews, who I have the same amount of love for that you have for your niece and nephew, and there was an age difference. No, same as you. And sometimes you just have to just give the love that you have and support when you're with them and recognize that you can have a conversation with her if it will be done with the certain rules of a conversation without saying, I see you do this and you shouldn't do it, but say more of the fact you and I grew up in the same home and I know it affected me this way, and I don't know how it affected you, but, you know, you know, sister, I see the same thing going on here. And, and I'm sure you may be aware of it or you may not be aware of it, but I, 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 think, there, I think that you would want to be aware that there, there, there are changes that you can do or th there are places you can go. And, and maybe you have a list of a few items where they should go get some assistance in communicating with their kids without the the abuse that goes along with it. Because it does affect your nieces and nephews. It yeah. Does. I mean, so I've just kind of been sitting here doing a little research just to see because I did come across a video the other day that 
moms typically because they are the ones that are the main caregivers. Mm -hmm. Moms do have to yell sometimes to achieve attention because of the baseline they've already set. So wait, 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 wait. I'm going to, I'm going to stop you for a second. Yeah. This was coming from a psychologist. You grew up in a home. Yes. Where the mom in the home doesn't know how to talk the way that I communicate. She yells and screams about everything. Mom was a yeller. Yeah. I don't think that's. Hold hold on a second. Let me just finish my little path, path here. And when she does yell, you guys at this point in time, are immune to it. You guys don't even listen to it. When I ask you- I wouldn't you, say so, that at all. No. Mm-mm. Okay. I I'm think, wrong. No, I think we just have different views. Like you're coming from a different POV. I'm the kid POV. So it's just different how we maybe see things. But there's differences in parenting styles. And so what I'm trying to get at is there was a psychologist talking and they just said, because moms are typically such a safe space, mom is- mom is calm, composed or whatever. If mom doesn't elevate that threshold, a lot of times the kids won't pay attention. So that's why mom does have to resort to yelling. Mom yelled consistently. I'm talking about moms in general. In general. Okay. And my mom yells, but I wouldn't, it's not 24 seven, but (laughs) I would say like, this is coming from a psychologist. And then I was like, okay, let me browse here really quick. Yelling is common. A study from the Journal of Marriage and Family concluded that nearly 90% of parents with children ages two or older admitted to yelling, screaming, or shouting at their kids. Yelling certainly isn't a recommended style of form or regular discipline, but it's common. Almost all parents yell and it's normalized. There's a very real reality that when you yell, it's the only time your kids will listen. Um, And there's one stat, there's one comment here that I find interesting excessive yelling in a family and at children has been compared to the same detrimental effects as spanking. There is a level of yelling that may not have a significant negative effect, but there's a fine line between yelling to get your kid's attention or to make a point, and it's another for it to be a regularly yelling mom whose kids cringe when you enter the room. And abusiveness. Yes. So there is a fine line. And like, if you've yelled before, to get your kid's attention, you know, and you're listening, you're, you feel terrible now. Don't. Like, people yell. But when it's 100% of the time and it's the only way you talk to your kids, like you said, yeah, it it gets to that line of it becomes abusive. And they ignore it because that's all they've heard all their life and they don't have the 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 the, the, the level that's normal level. And then when you really do need to make an effect— yeah, it's, it's abusing the it's abusing the 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 effect mode. <laughs> yeah, well, I also think it like a lot of things that happen in our childhoods can create trauma and PTSD to where a lot of people have CPTSD now mm-hmm. from childhood stuff like this and their parents screaming nonstop as a part of that. It can it can induce it. So I, I grew up in a home. Yeah. My father did not know how to talk. My mother would say, why are you using the phone to communicate with him? He can hear you without the phone, and he is across the country. (laughs) Now, Doris wasn't a screamer and a yeller. Mm -hmm. Typically, she was not. Now, that doesn't mean she didn't raise her voice a couple times to be effective, but it wasn't the, the everyday conversation. So I going back to our... Our OP, I think that if you have a conversation that can might be effective without picking on her, but trying to enlighten her just so she's aware, that might be a you might have, and I say might with a with a lot of italicize or something. <laughs> Because it probably won't do a thing. She'll probably end up yelling at you because it's it, it, people yell out of insecurity and and and, lo- and losing their shit. But you have all the ability to certainly have the relationship with them, get them out of that environment, and talk to them and re encourage them and give them that kind of love. They yeah. figure it out at the end of the day. And I will tell you that the kids look. My my niece and nephews were yelled at all it, from from the time they were born, and they've turned out fine. They're they're great people. They're great human beings. They're successful. They, 
But they, I will say that it's interesting. Uh, one of them is still a screamer and a yeller with her kids. Mm -hmm. And the other one took the path of me where we don't yell. We don't want it in our life. We don't, it, it literally, we have damned it to, you know, to hell. Basically we don't yell and scream unless we really get pushed to the, to our limit. Mm -hmm. But I, I've never seen really, I've never seen Jono yell at those kids. Never. Yeah, he keeps it together very well. There is a little bit more info on this mom. Mm -hmm. My niece and nephew have had a very strained and confusing childhood as their fathers, different dads, have been absent or removed from their lives for putting them in dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. This, on top of how my sister is parenting them, is another one of my major areas of concern for their mental health. And I think that is so valid. But that context to me also kind of says like, Maybe mom is just at her wits end, overwhelmed, mm -hmm. doing it all on her own with right. two young kids. And maybe she needs a bit more support from her village. Yeah. Maybe you can step in and be part of that that support team for her to give her more flexibility of having time to go do things that she needs to do. And she knows that the kids are being, you know, managed or picked up or dropped off or whatever it may by you stepping in if you can. Because I know that when it came to with raising my kids, you know, my nieces and nephews. Yeah. Their father was out of the picture. There was a period of time where it was bad. And we stepped up. I mean, I used to pick them up from school at the end of the day, transport them to their next, you know, after, after school. Uh, activity or whatever it, it was. It was. It, yeah. was. it was a consistent thing. If it wasn't me, it was their grandmother or their 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 grandfather. My dad would 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 even, you know, certainly was always there. We all worked worked the system for them to help yeah. her because she was a professional. She would she went to work, left the house at seven o'clock and didn't return to seven in the evening. Yeah, it's a lot. And I think, you know, kids are amazing, but I think kids can also be a lot at the same time. And if you never get a break and you are constantly doing that on your own, mm -hmm mom, dad, maid, like you're doing it all on your own, you're going to go through some burnout. You're going to be fried. And so you might not have the patience to take a deep breath, don't yell. And so she could need some some support. She, I, I guarantee it. So it's good that we're taking a look at all these different things mm -hmm. and and I do believe that you can help if, if since you love it, it, it's it's a gift to you to be able to step up and get to hang out with them and build the relationships. I will tell you that the relationship that I have built with those kids, being that step in, is unbreakable. Yeah, and they are now forty and fifty years old. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I can't tell if our listener still lives far from home and is just kind of visiting, but I still think address it and then help when you can, you know, FaceTime calls to give mom a minute alone in a bath or something. I mean, anything you certainly can help. You certainly don't want to tear her down and make her fall apart, you know, for, for what's going on, but you want to give her encouragement and, and be, a, be support for her, but also at the same time, give her an answer on, and the, and, and, and the, the tool that she doesn't have to consistently lose her shit. Yeah. Stepping in, if you're able to step in and be be that support for her when she really needs it, that might be enough to start helping. Yeah. Well, and the kids are now 11 and 8. Mm -hmm. Like they're at ages where you can sit down and have a conversation and say, hey, mommy doesn't like yelling. What can we all do so we can avoid yelling and talk to each other? And they're at an age where this could be a really family oriented solution. They're, they're, they're little people at this point. Exactly. In time. They definitely get what's going on. They do. And they know, they know when they're pressing the button. And they, yeah, that's also true. And they know exactly what they're doing. They're little demons. I mean, <laughs> okay. So, Moving along. There you are. One of this week's partners is Mosh. I was first introduced to them when they were handing out samples at the airport, and ever since trying, I've been hooked. As you guys know, I struggle with my morning routines. I really do not get myself breakfast very often. So having Mosh on hand has been a game changer for me. And Mosh recently came in handy when we were on a little road trip the other day. Yeah, you handed me a chocolate peanut butter one. Flavor was great. You, you would not know that you were eating a 
a protein bar, I mean, you really feel like you're eating a great candy bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I had the banana bread flavor and it was also delectable. And the apple cinnamon oatmeal flavor is the perfect breakfast bar. You held off on that one for me. That I would have loved I'm, that one. I am not sharing that flavor. These bars also have seven brain nutrients, 12 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and seven to eight grams of fiber. My favorite part about Mosh is that these protein bars were mindfully formulated by some of the top neuroscientists and functional nutritionists. As someone with a sensitive stomach, I get a little worried sometimes when I try new things. But not only does Mosh taste amazing, it leaves me feeling pretty good too. So whether you've got a busy day ahead of you, you want a good breakfast, or maybe a snack after working out, Mosh has you covered. Where do we get them? Head to moshlife.com slash FKS to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count plant-based trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count plant-based trial pack, which includes two of each mouthwatering flavor. M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash FKS. Okay, number two. Peace. Peace, sister. Okay, number two. Peace. Yes. Hey, y'all, I need help. Oh, another Southerner. I, 30 female, have been with my boyfriend, 30 male, for almost a year and a half. Overall, things have been going pretty well. We are able to sit, laugh, and joke, and genuinely enjoy each other's company. We get along pretty well, except when it comes to our dogs. I have one dog, a two-year-old Shih Tzu named Boston. Boston is very much a Velcro dog and is always by my side. I am clearly his favorite person, mainly due to the fact that I've had him since he was seven weeks old. And it was just me and my dog for the first year of having him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. My boyfriend has two dogs, Tuxedo, Pit Lab Mix, and Aurora, German Shepherd, Great Pyrenees Mix, who are three and two years old, respectively. The dogs get along fine with each other, but my boyfriend clearly treats my dog differently. Anytime someone gets into the trash, it is automatically assumed that my dog did it. Anytime we leave the house, his dogs get to stay out while mine has to be kenneled. How's Boston getting into the trash then, huh? Huh? If Boston jumps onto the couch, my boyfriend complains that he shouldn't be doing that and says my dog shouldn't be able to just lay on the couch. He should be on the floor instead. Yet, it is fine that his dogs lay on the couch frequently and will climb over people to make space for themselves on the couch. But what bothers me most is how he chooses to deal with my dog when he feels the dogs need to be corrected. I've always used positive reinforcement with my dog. He uses physical punishment. He has shoved my dog off the couch, swept his feet out from under him while going down the stairs, all the way to throwing him off the bed holding him onto the floor, and shoving his face into the floor. Shih Tzu is about, about seven pounds. They're small dogs, holly size. Yeah, well, that's, that's 14 to 16 pounds. That's, but Shih Tzus can be a little, it can be small. They can be 12 pounds. They're usually holly size. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't need to go have, I mean, I, I, don't, I, could, I can't imagine a, a, a grown man taking the dog and throwing the dog, tripping the dog, he abusing is. the dog. He is, and this is animal abuse. Absolutely. My dog has bit my boyfriend multiple times because of his treatment of the dog. He has been biased against small dogs from his childhood because his mom always had small dogs who were never trained and allowed to get away with anything. My dog does no basic commands, sit, come, off, but he is very stubborn and doesn't always listen. I also feel like my dog doesn't listen to my boyfriend much because the dog doesn't like my boyfriend. Yeah, because he kicks his ass. I don't even like your boyfriend. The awkward tension between my dog and boyfriend is really wearing on me and stressing me out. I don't know what I should do and if this should be a deal breaker. Ideal outcome, I just wish my boyfriend and dog could get along. Additional info, I have tried to address this before, but nothing really seems to change. I do give him some leeway because he has been very stressed lately. The kitchen in his house has been being remodeled after a water main break. We live an hour and a half away but I go over to his house every other weekend. So she doesn't live with him. I she's think got they, a way. Out, she's got a way out of this thing. Run, <laughs> run! You got a, You got a way out. This guy is 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 not loving and kind of a caring. He could. It's 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 for the, his mood of the day if he wants to be loving and caring. But apparently, if if you piss him off, you're not going to be treated much different than the dog. 
This is concerning. Yeah. I I do think like abuse can start by small boundary pushes like this, you know, breaking a TV or throwing something, punching a wall, but he is abusing your dog. He's an this, abusive guy. This is animal abuse. And I I think people that are mean and aggressive and torture and hurt animals are sick and twisted and they'll do it to people. Absolutely. I, I feel the same way. I, I don't I don't I don't like this. I mean, to take a little dog and kick his legs out from under him as he's going down the stairs, like this is how a little dog gets their leg broken. Throwing him off the bed. If someone did that to my dog, they would be out of the house so, immediately. I got a question for, for you to think about. I want you to imagine that you don't dump this dude. I call it DDD, dump the dude. Let's imagine you don't DTD and you have a life with this guy and you conceive children with him. This guy is, who knows what, how he'll treat his own kids. That's kind of a red flag. I see it as a big red flag. I think it could be a deal breaker. It pro it would be for me. For me, I'm it would be for me. We're done. I'm done. There's like one time where like I really oh my god, Holly, Holly our our lovely Holly bites people. She does not like new people. She will attack and bite. And we have to manage that. And we really, really do manage it. And so one of the first times, you know, Justin, I wouldn't, we'd have her on a leash. We'd keep her up on a chair, wouldn't let her near him. But one time she got loose and came into the kitchen when we were in there and launched herself up at his leg and was hooked on, wouldn't let go. I'm yelling at her. She's not letting go. She's aggressively biting him. And I gave her a kick to get her off. I didn't I didn't know what else to do because you're not supposed to get in there yourself because oftentimes you'll get bit. So I gave her a nice hard push with my leg and I still feel bad about it. But I'm like, I didn't know what else to do. Like he's literally getting attacked. Does he still have his leg? Barely. He's deep scars. Deep scars. So and, and post traumatic? Yeah, a little bit. He yeah, still kind of looks at her. She, like, oh. she cost me five grand on a lawsuit in that first time she bit. I know. So she's she is kind of a head case. So I I feel so bad about doing that, even though I know like it was probably the logical thing to do in that moment. Mm -hmm. Dog experts could probably tell me otherwise. But for him to like un... Oh, what's the word? It's like unprovoked. Mm -hmm. For him to like unprovokedly treat your dog like this is... But, so messed up. So the, just just so you know, we certainly took action on how to manage Holly that she doesn't do this. Oh, we she's well well behaved. And now. we and we know that when when somebody's going to come to the house, we the, don't let the, her near them. Well, and that's not true. I actually send them on a walk with her because when you send her on a that walk, that does help. It she realizes that there is a uh, a senior pack leader. Yeah, I still don't trust her though. I just I don't even give her the opportunity, which is what mm -hmm. you're supposed to do when you have dogs like that. Mm -hmm. Like you don't set your dog up for failure. I don't but set little, her up, but, but little I little Boston, it seems like a good dog. Yeah. And I think it is kind of a weird double standard, too, that his dogs get to go on the couch. Boston has to be on the floor. Yeah. He's done. He's got dogs that are shedders. Your Shih Tzu has Hair, not fur. Shih tzus don't shed. So if anyone should be on the couch, it should be Boston. And then Boston has to go in the kennel when they leave, but the other two get to run around. And then he blames Boston for getting in the trash. Probably the big dogs that can actually get their big heads in the trash. Well, Holly does a fine job with the trash on her own. I mean, maybe it's Boston, but it's likely the culprits that get left out. Like, yeah. come on. Like, what? what is this weird double standard? Let's go back to the thing. He's not partnering... He's not a partner with you on this thing. He is single. He's one way and only one way. And I just, I just think that you should just say, you know something, buddy, you want to come see me. You drive the hour and a half to come hang with me. If you, if you got to have him in your life, make him come to you. And by the way, he can leave his dogs at home. I, this is just weird. I That's the way I, I mean, I would start. The, I mean, like I'm done with the guy anyways, but, I, if, I, but if you yeah. have to have the guy, Let's put him, run him through the ringer. I would love to see what everyone's take on this one is. Like if someone treating your dog or cat terribly would be a deal breaker for you. Because I mean, dogs, Boston could easily live for another 14 years. 
And are you going to let your dog get treated like this for 14 years? I just look at it. I'm looking at the man. I'm not looking at at, at anything other than that. This is the kind of guy he is. I, I'm I'm telling you, Morgan, if, if you were with a guy like this, I would say, you got to think about this one. Take a look and step back. Step out and watch and take yeah. a look. This is what you really want seven years, 10 years down the road. It's going to get old. Yeah, you have a lot to consider. Life is, I'm going to tell you one thing, OP, life is long. And life is long when you're with somebody. Mm -hmm. And it just gets longer if you're noticing things today. So take it as getting pulled over for the speeding ticket, getting a warning from the cop, and going on your way. Yeah. That's, that, that's, That's this guy's thinking. Okay, moving along. Yep. Another one of this week's partners is Hungry Root. What's for dinner is a question that stresses me out so much. And if it stresses you out too, that's where Hungry Root can come in. I love that it's such an easy way to get fresh, high-quality food delivered straight to my door and keep me out of the grocery store. I love everything I've tried from Hungry Root, from the simple meals that I can just heat up and prepare to my breakfast and snack items that keep me going and not getting hangry. And it's super easy to get started with Hungry Root. You take a short quiz, they get to know you, what flavors you like, what goals you have. Hungry Root creates such a well-rounded delivery. They really go above and beyond your weekly grocery haul. And you're actually going to put your groceries to good use before you forget them in the back of your fridge with all of their easy recipes. And my favorite part about Hungry Root is they follow a simple standard. It's got to taste good, be quick to make, and contain whole trusted ingredients. Right now, Hungry Root is offering our listeners 30% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash FKS to get 30% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash FKS. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Link is also in the description. Number three. I, 26 female, am having a lot of trouble with jealousy and low self-esteem in my relationship. Due to childhood trauma and mental illness, I've never really liked myself. I've always thought of myself as ugly and undesirable. This has led me to be shy, so I didn't get into my first relationship until a little over a year ago. I love my boyfriend, 28 male. He is amazing, thoughtful, and patient. He's my favorite human. I have discovered many issues with myself that affect us both. He has been there to work through them with me, but I'm worried I'm causing issues and self-sabotaging to push him away before he can hurt me. Our current problem is my boyfriend has recently started nursing school, a woman-dominated field. He has been partnered up with a girl that I believe to be much more attractive than me. He even admitted that she is pretty after I pushed him to admit it. He and I both believe in not having friends of the opposite gender. I am scared he is going to get closer with these girls. His lab partner recently asked him to meet her at school to help her with a checkoff, and he agreed. He says he has a desire to help people. He is going to become a nurse. This, to me, was him agreeing to spend two hours that he did not have to with a girl he finds pretty. I told him since he already agreed, I am okay with it happening this time. However, if he continues having one-on-one sessions with girls that are outside of class, I will not stick around. The thought of him being close with another female outside of class makes me sick. I had a panic attack at the thought of it earlier this week. I understand he wants to help people and has good intentions, but it is not his job. She has other classmates to help her. I know I'm being insecure and jealous, but alone time with someone of the opposite sex is a boundary I am firm on. He explained this to the girl and was pretty upset that he had to hurt her feelings and can't help her anymore. I'm spiraling because I don't like hurting my boyfriend, but I don't want to be hurt either. I am okay with them working together in groups or class, but not alone. And when I think of them spending time alone together, I can't help but wonder how he can't fall in love with her when I'm so flawed and ugly and she's beautiful. I'm sure you think I'm in the wrong here, My boyfriend is respecting my boundaries. I told him he is free to do what he wants, but I will not idly sit by as he becomes close with these girls outside of class. It makes me so upset. I can't afford therapy and I don't know who to talk to about this. I really need encouragement. I know you'll probably just say trust my boyfriend, but what I'm looking for is how can I fix my self-esteem? How can I love myself so that I can really believe others can love me and that I'm not 
worthless. How can I be okay with my boyfriend being around women that we both find prettier than me, but still find some kind of healthy beauty in myself? Right now, it feels impossible. Ideal outcome, to be able to like myself and see value in myself, to not self-sabotage my relationship. Additional info, please be gentle with me. I love listening to you and Morgan's podcast. Thank you for the advice. I'm going to try to be gentle with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want you to hear hear me and really hear me loud on this one. I have gone out with some women that were very attractive. One of them was a swimsuit illustrated model. The woman that the women that I can think of that I love the most had nothing to do with looks. The looks after you're with somebody that is hot and you've been with them two or three times and you've lit in that candle, it burns up if there's nothing left that, 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 that reinforces it from who they are and what they stand for. This guy went out with you the way, for the way you looked. He fell in love with you for who you were. And now you're becoming a jealous monster. And let me tell you something. That would scare the hell out of me. As much as I love you, it's going to dry. You're, you're succeeding in sabotaging yourself where you don't need to do that. And yes, I would recommend you get some assistance and some help. And I don't know how or where to go. Morgan's always better with, with finding that out and some of the people that write in are. I'm just letting you know that you don't have to think because she's hot. And I'm, and I'm just using that to not knowing really how good looking she is. I'm just saying, just imagine she is the hottest thing in the world that he is going to drop you for her. He is looking for the woman that really gives some support, knows who he is, respects who he is, and knows that, that the person that he's with says he is a jewel because he does want to help people. Mm -hmm. He does want to share. And if this person wasn't a hot blonde with all the women parts and was a man that was hot and had man parts, maybe you wouldn't be jealous. But the bottom line is, is that his intention is the same to be a friend, to, to help someone as the kind of kind guy he is and why you fell in love with him. So now you fell in love with this guy and now you're going to clip his wings of who he is. Soon as you clip somebody who they are, that's when you got a problem. Yeah, I agree. I I look back at my my grad school and my education experience and having practicals and having a practice on classmates. And um, I had two classmates that were dating. They are now married with kids. And she would have to watch him pick up girls and, you know, transfer them and do, you know, palpations on them. And he would have to watch her get palpated on from other guys. Like it it went both ways in this class, but I can't ever imagine either one of them having an issue with that. They get that this is the educational experience. Mm -hmm. This just comes with the territory of healthcare. And that's just kind of the reality of this. Like nursing is heavily women. He's going to have women coworkers throughout his whole career. And I don't think it's necessarily reality or even healthy to say, you can't be friends with anyone of the opposite gender. I really, I get why you feel that's got to be your boundary, but it's just not reality for a lot of people. And if you make it yours, I think you will continue to push him away from you. You'll have the opposite effect of what you really want. And I mean, we can, we can all give the, the analogies of the butterfly and let them fly and let them be, and they'll come back to you and all those wonderful things. But I'm just going to give you reality to the fact he came to you the first for the, he came to you for who you are. Yeah. He stayed with you for who you are and how you treated him and, and, and the love that you guys were able to respect. And now you're changing the deal. Don't yeah. change the deal. Stay who you are you and have confidence. It will be fine if you are who you the person who you were when he approached you and fell in love with you. Yeah, I agree. I think you really need to look inward. And if therapy and 
you know, that's not affordable for you right now. I know there's a lot of online groups where you can go and seek support from other people that might be feeling the same way. Reddit has communities. There might be Facebook groups in your area of people that, you know, you meet up with. But I would really look into ways that you can increase your confidence, making new friends, getting out of the house, having other people that that you like and enjoy that aren't your boyfriend. Well, what about talking to him? But not not assassinating him, but having a communication with him. I think so. But I think, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can build confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. Some of that can be internal. Some of that can come from external sources. If you feel that you're capable and confident, that could radiate into other areas of your life. So it's like, try a hobby. Go do something for yourself. You know, expand your horizons and work on that that Mm self-love, you know. You are beautiful. I I don't I don't I don't even have to see you. Like everyone is beautiful in their mm-hmm. own amazing way and I just to hear this it is it is sad and I think you really just got to like put in the work to to learn to love yourself and find opportunities that let you love yourself. Mm-hmm. You go rock climbing. Wow. I am strong. I am tough. I am brave. I went rock climbing expand your horizons and give yourself opportunities to increase your confidence and learn more about yourself and increase that self-love. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, it, the looks last for about 22 seconds. It's, it's who you are inside exactly. of, of what makes a, a, a person really fall in love with somebody. It's not their look at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really think, you know, this boundary I really would evaluate, you know, the strain it's causing on your relationship. I think I think it's unfair and I think it could create a lot of resentment and I think that is I think resentment and a lack of trust is relationship graveyard. It is. And so It really is. You got to you got to address it. I mean, like you said, he fell in love with her for a reason and you know, life Don't is, change the deal. Life is about faith and having faith and taking a risk and it's it's a gamble life is a gamble but don't, don't self sabotage don't change the deal cuz sounds like you have a good one too i mean he's willing to to draw this boundary and tell people that he can't work with them which is so unfair like this is also his education on the line helping them Helps might him. help him because some people learn from teaching and helping others so you could be sabotaging him directly too. So I, I I hope I was gentle not to beat you up, but there is some reality here. And I yeah. really want you to think about it. And we all go through this. Like I wake up a lot of days and I feel disgusting. I don't feel confident in my body. We all go through this. And like, I know, you know, I see comments like Morgan looks so pretty on that episode. And I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, my triple chin. We all all experience this like the most beautiful people still have some of the biggest insecurities so don't compare it's it's really the thief of joy good one yeah thank you for writing in by yeah truly thanks for sharing your story and keep us posted how everything goes and um, any listeners out there if you have any advice be sure to comment what you've done and tried or you know share and read all the comments because i guarantee you people are going to step up to the plate for you yeah, I think I think a lot of people go through this. Like I also saw a video the other day that like if you wake up and look in the mirror one morning and you feel like you're like really ugly one day of the month, it's probably because like of like your hormonal changes throughout the month, especially if you um like have female hormones. And I was like, "Oh my god, that's so true. It's this day right before." Like I'm like, "Yeah, I am puffy." So that's we're why. we're complicated people. Yeah, I never have the I never have yeah, this no, problem. Yeah, you're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you're perfect. I'm your dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along. Moving along. What number? Four. Hi, fam. I love the shows. I'm a longtime listener and hoping you could provide some advice. Let's jump right into it, as Morgan would say. My boyfriend and I moved in together about six months ago, and it's been great, except for the fact that he is very allergic to cats and I have a cat. We both love my cat, but he is extremely allergic to the point he has asthma, can't breathe well, coughing, lungs hurt, bad congestion, and can't sleep. It's gotten worse over the months somehow, and he looks so miserable lately. 
and I feel so bad for him. He takes an allergy pill, tried multiple kinds. I wiped down the cat. We have three air purifiers, and I started opening the windows more. It's not helping. He's going to go see a doctor, but I'm not sure how much they can do. Plus, he doesn't have insurance. I love my cat and would never get rid of her. She's my baby, and I had her well before I met my boyfriend. My boyfriend and I have been planning to move to new chapters in our life, like starting a family, but I don't know how we continue living together when he's being tortured every night by allergies. It's taking a huge toll on his physical and mental health, being exhausted all the time. Any suggestions on keeping both my cat and partner? I have one. Oh gosh, hold on. Let me just read this additional info. Sure. Ideal outcome is finding a way to have an environment where my boyfriend can feel comfortable without his extreme allergy attacks while also keeping my cat. Additional info. We have a great relationship other than this. Breaking up or giving up my cat isn't an option. He's had to start sleeping at his shop just to be able to get some rest. Yeah, well, that's what my next is. I did have a great suggestion. Oh, okay. My great suggestion is we can actually put up a, a, a little curl up bed in the garage and put the boyfriend there. I don't think that's very sustainable <laughs> can't make, or comfortable. Can't, 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 can't put the boyfriend in the garage? You might have to reevaluate well, that the, suggestion. The cat, we're not putting the cat outside. I mean, that's not going to happen. No. So the answer really is, is look, I've never had these allergies. I've never really suffered this stuff. I know that the woman that I'm sharing my life with right now wants to go back to her childhood where she had a cat and wants a cat. I am done with animals. I really am. I've I've had animals to where I put them down, where I've you know gone through it, or where they've peed all over the place, and you, and and I'm and I I live through through all the aspects of an animal, but I want freedom at this point in time, I'm, and so it is. It I, I hate to say it might be a deal breaker, but that's just not where I'm willing to go today. Is back to an animal. They yeah. they have this relationship and they love each other and he can't live with this is real. Yeah, this is brutal by the sounds of it. And I don't know if she's got an office where the cat can live. I don't know if there's but I do know one thing that if she's got a place where the cat can go and that will love the cat, the cat will will get will get love if she's got a great place to 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 bring the cat. Yeah. But, but I don't see how she can have both. Yeah, unless, is, she, unless and, but, I'm sorry, I yeah. you go. unless the boyfriend will sleep in the garage. <laughs> You're really something. Um, well, I do have a little like tidbit. I know, you know, you say you say he's going to a doctor, but doesn't really have insurance and insurance. I don't even think covers this anyways. But um, Justin's roommate, Austin, used to live with his ex-girlfriend who loves cats. Austin is like your boyfriend, deathly allergic to cats. Same exact reactions. And Austin has asthma. So cat allergy plus asthma, asthma. Woof. Austin was on his deathbed. And he really cared for this person. Yes. So they ended up, Austin went to like a special allergy doctor and he would get regular shots, really intense allergy shots. It started intensely like once a month and then over the course of him building up whatever. Immunity, they actually raised the dosage. Yeah, whatever. I mean, dosage. Yep. So then it would go like, you know, once every three months and things like that. But Austin went from your boyfriend who was dying to Austin lived with three cats and sometimes she would foster kittens. So Austin would live with 11 cats. So, I mean, it's doable. And then maybe after your cat passes, which could be 20 years, but maybe you don't get another cat. Like these allergy shots, while intense and costly, it could be something you split with him or, you know, it could be a short term solution. I think like you could get to a point where it's like he does the allergy shots and then you get married and have a kid. And then it might make more sense to find your cat a home. Because what if you guys have a kid and if your kid's allergic, like you could get to a point where your boyfriend's allergic, your kids are allergic, and you're the only one that's not. Well, here's a good question. And then what? Here is a question. Yeah. Take your boyfriend out of the picture right now. He's sleeping in the garage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and somehow you went out to the car that night and you guys conceive a kid in the back seat. 
God. <laughs> Just go along okay. with me. Go along I'm with, with you. me. Go along with me. <laughs> <laughs> and you find out that the backseat worked well, and now you are you do have a kid. Mm-hmm. And you do see that the kid is definitely allergic to the cat. Forget the boyfriend. What are you doing that your kid is allergic to the cat? Yeah, I think that's... Put yourself in in that place Mm -hmm. and now answer the question. Let us know, let us know in the right and what what you're going to do. Yeah. Well, and they're there, right? Like we're talking about moving to the next chapters, like starting a family. So I I just want to know. I think that's a good question to ask. I want to know. You just found out your kid has been sick. He's four months old. You can't figure what the problem is. And now it comes out after the after the scratch test that it is the cat. Yeah. What are you going to do? That sucks. Just, just tell us the answer. And when you tell us the answer, pay attention to your answer. I think that I think that'll give you a lot of insight. And I mean, try the shots. Like the shots could be a miracle worker for him mm-hmm. and he could be good aid ready to go but then obviously if be, a kid comes along be prepared ask your question yeah. first what if it was my kid well and this is the hard part with animals i mean me and justin we just went to the burbank animal shelter this past weekend because i didn't know that yeah we were at costco and um he got new tires on his car and it took three hours so we walked to like the animal Who, shelter whose idea was that oh it was mine yeah i imagine that. yeah so we're looking at these animals and if anyone in Southern California, I also think you can adopt from out of state, but if anyone is looking for an animal, they have dogs, cats, guinea pigs, everything. But these dogs, especially some of the most warm, friendly, well-behaved shelter dogs I've ever come across. I'll post pictures if you're watching on YouTube and they're so cute. So adopt if you're looking from there. But um, a lot of these dogs that were in there and cats were like, Owner surrender, owner had to move, couldn't have dogs at their new house. And I get life happens, but it is kind of a sad, really fucked up situation that like your animal for some people is treated as disposable. So there it's just I am I am sure that after you come to the conclusion that if it's my child that's allergic that you would find a wonderful home for your kitty. But I guess... Your friend. But here's the thing. Your 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 other kid. But here's the thing. There's the thing? They're not engaged. Right. What if they break up and she gives the cat away? That's fucked. For me, I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything with the cat until like you realize this is endgame. Well, maybe some maybe someone in the family will take the cat on a temporary basis to be possibly be permanent. I don't know. I think the boyfriend tries the shots. Otherwise, like you kind of just let time see if you guys are actually meant to be together. Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you just live in other places. Like not everyone lives together. No. Like you guys could live in your separate places. He for can now. certainly live in the garage. Oh my God. In the curl up bed. Yeah. And anyone. The ba- uh, and the back seat could be their good time place. Oh my God. If there's anyone out there who has dealt with something similar or has tried the allergy pit, like shots, let us know, but keep us posted what you do and what your answer is to that question. I, I really want to know the answer to the question. <laughs> okay, moving along. I think she disowned me as dad. <laughs> <laughs> me? No. Oh, the, yeah. OP. It's tough. I don't think you should just give your animal away to like because I, it, the situation gets tough. I think that she should talk to someone in the family, see if the if someone in the family will... Take the take the cat. I don't know. I'd try the allergy shots first. Well, one day you brought me home a cat or a dog or something. I mean, you bring me this shit all the time when we were young. Yeah, and I would say try the allergy shots. And if that doesn't work, then you you have to evaluate. Like, is this a deal breaker? Because not everyone's allergic to cats. I think the allergy shot's a great first step. Yeah. I I, I don't think it's okay to just give your animals away. Like I think the, the allergy, bring them back to a shelter. I think Austin is a was a wonderful example because let me tell you, he really did care for this woman, mm-hmm. and he went through hell for this. Yeah, and I remember that. Yeah, definitely. And at the end of the day, they, they didn't did, work. They out. They didn't work out. I know, and he thought that was endgame. I mean, they were together for I think seven years. I mean, he really so. So you just go to show you that. If you know, try the shots, and if if the shots don't work, I would certainly see if someone in your family wants to 
take take a participation in in the cat. And if you guys get married, the 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 family member gets to keep the cat. And if the guys don't work out, cat comes home. I think if the allergy shots don't work, you have to think: Is this the guy for you? Cat came first, you know. Hey, I have no problem dump. I have no problem dumping the dude. <laughs> DDD. We're going to call the show DDD. Dump the dude. Dump the dude or dump the dame. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying DDD? DT. Oh. Delta Tango. Oh. Delta. I dump thought you were saying DDD, like dump the D A. Dump the dude. Dump the dude. Dump the dude. Triple D. Dump the dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. God, we're getting nutty. I know. Moving along. All right. Number five for. Bye. Number five for you on Spotify. Or just audio. There's other audio platforms. What else do we have? Oh, my God. Apple, iHeartRadio, really? Stitcher, Died, I think, Google. Yeah, I never knew all this oh stuff. Oh, my God. There's so many. Okay. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, and Justin. My boyfriend became a football coach for a local team in the area, and he has been really enjoying it. Before his last game, he told me it would be okay if I didn't go because it would be very cold and he expects the team to lose. I told him that it's his last game and that I wanted to be there regardless. The day of the game comes around and he tells me that it's okay if I leave at halftime because of the same reasons. I said I would stay the whole game. During that game... Why is he trying to get rid of her? I don't know. During that game, I found out that one of my friends just broke up with her boyfriend. I knew I needed to be there for her and she mentioned that she wanted to hang out with me. So I left the game during halftime to hang out with her and a few other friends. I texted my boyfriend when I left, explaining the situation and apologizing. When the game was over, he was furious at me, threatening to not come home that night, telling me I'm an asshole, and telling me I let him down. Hello? I apologized to him and told him that we can talk about it when I get home, but he can't run away for the night. He ended up staying home, but he's locked himself in his room. We live together, but have separate bedrooms until further notice. We haven't spoken at all today. His reaction to me is so unwarranted and weird. He didn't seem to care if I was at the game or not. I understand why he would be upset, but is he overreacting? What should I do? He won't talk to me or leave his room. Ideal outcome? Well, I don't want to break up over this. I just want to talk it out and be okay. Additional info, nothing like this has ever happened in our relationship. So I'm in new territory here. What are you smelling here, Morgan? Something fucking fishy. What are you smelling? This um, is weird. What are you smelling? Did he climb out the window and go somewhere else? Like What are you smelling here? Bullshit. Thank you. That's weird. It's all bullshit. He didn't want you to go. I don't. I think he was trying to get you away, get you away from the game because somebody else might be at the game. And now this is a. It's a now look, I could be full of shit. Yeah, I mean that's that's an, a jump for sure. Really, I mean it's a bad, speculating, but it's a bad accusation. Something I doesn't it. feel right. That's for sure. And it, this just makes sense from shit that I have experienced and I have seen. And it's just, they transfer it all upon you and they make you feel like shit and make it all your fault. And the reality is somebody else was at the game. And that's why he kept driving you away from the game. Well, and the thing is too, it's like, well, if you're going to, if you're going to go, you know, you can leave at halftime because what do you do after a game? I've dated a lot of athletes you usually wait after the game and say hi to them and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, oh, well, you can leave at halftime, babe. Well, you get out of here because someone else could have been there. Right. I get that. I think this is very weird. And if this is the first time this has happened, you have to ask yourself what has changed. Okay. So let me, let me ask you a question. How do, being what we suspect, what advice do we have for her and how to handle this going forward? Knowing what, knowing what we know. Well, we don't really know much, so but that's. Let's just say we we're, do. We're let's speculating. Say we, let's say if we're, what we're speculating is true. What is what? Where does she go from here? Either to keep the guy, get the guy to you know to confess. I to, mean, you to, sit down and you have a conversation, and you say this feels really strange. This reaction doesn't really feel justifiable based on you know what happened and what I did. Um, I thought it wouldn't be an issue to leave at halftime. 
and go support my friend. No, because no, no. Wait, 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 wait. You I, have I, to assume. You have, I have to go to stop, off reality. I'm going to stop you a second because okay, he let's... point blank said, you do not need to stay. He gave her the gateway out. He did. So why this reaction? So the only the only thing you can go on based on, you know, what has happened here and the reality we are all living in, you have to just address it. This feels weird. Is something else going on? I don't, I personally, I don't feel like what I did would justify the reaction from you. I'm, I'm confused. I just, I'm, I'm baffled by this. Like, is something going on? I say, call, call the motherfucker on it. Say point blank. This is a behavior of somebody that didn't want me to be at the game told me to come to the game, but I could leave. And when I did leave, he's going to turn it all around because you are simply, and let's just put it on the table. If you're seeing somebody else or you met someone, just tell me. Because obviously I wouldn't want to be with someone that doesn't want, doesn't want to be with me. Yeah. But I, I also like, you know, there's a bunch of reasons why he could not want her there too. Like you can give that one to me because I'm ready to listen to it. I feel like if you play for a bad team or you know you're embarrassed, like he's coaching a team, he expected them to lose. That could be an excuse, or he could actually be embarrassed. By the way, for you on the radios, I am shaking my head. Absolutely no, I am not buying this shit. Not everyone is super confident and like. It could be nerve wracking for him having her in the stands and could be embarrassing if they lose. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm I think, not buying it. I think there's potential, but I think any rational person, like regardless of like, you know, here's the other side that just popped into my head before I even finish this. Okay. How many times have you said someone like, oh, well, it's okay if you don't come. Like, I get it if you can't make it. Like, it's fine if you don't come down Keep tonight going. or come over, babe. Keep going. Because I've done that to Justin where it's like, hey, are you coming down tonight? No, I'm I'm staying up at my house. Oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. You know, I really could have used, you know, the, the mental support tonight, but it's okay if you don't come. And you give them the out. But deep down, you really want them and you just don't communicate it. And so I think that could also explain the reaction where she came, he was, he was embarrassed or he was you know, scared to admit that he wanted her there or whatever. Guys are insecure and don't talk about their feelings very well sometimes. And so that could have happened. And then when she did leave, it was like, oh, she left. Fuck her. You're really, wah, wah, you're, wah. You're really buying this shit, I'm, are you? I'm being you're a little really, devil's advocate you're you You're know? buying this crap. I don't know what it, I'm buying. Does anybody have a bridge in New York that Morgan might be interested in buying? I mean, I would really hit her with it and see if she's interested. This is going to be one we're probably really going to need an update on. I mean, this is, it's interesting. When I first read the couple lines, like, I'm like, damn, he really doesn't want her there. This is, this is weird. It was evident. It is. And I, but, oh, this is where I was going to go. I never finished my thought. Please finish it. Regardless of you being there and blah, 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 blah. Could you have stayed until after the game and then hung out with your friend? Yeah. Would you have gotten the same reaction from him and him being upset that you're not going home after? Yeah, he could have been upset. Here's the other thing, though. Would a rational person that isn't projecting or doesn't have anything else going on, would a rational person understand that, hey, life happens, shit happens, she had to go support her friend, I get it, I'm just I'm just coaching, no big deal, babe, like, I get you had to that, go help your friend. That's that is why I say exactly what I'm saying. Well, and that's a maybe rational, emotionally intelligent, secure person's response, but he might not be there. So there's there's a lot of what ifs here. Hit him with it. Hit him between the eyes with it and let me know what happened. <laughs> ah. Father knows something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something. And all you write-ins, let give her your opinion. So if she's got some other other factors that you guys may have something that I'm yeah. missing. And and like I said, I could be missing this, but I don't know. I mean, my spidey senses sometimes are on the money, and then sometimes shit goes over my head. So. And then I really, I op, please let us know what it was. 
Mm-hmm. And I know that you're going to have to be brave and brazen to go hit them between the eyes. But when you hit them between the eyes, stay calm, stay true, and do it with the rules of engagement. No name swearing, no this. It's just total, total confidence within yourself that if this is what he's choosing, you're okay with it and let's go forward and give him that out and let's see how he behaves. Yeah, keep us posted. And I'm curious to see if anyone else's spidey senses are tingling. But <laughs> that's all I got for you. That's it? That's it for this one. That, that's the, we're only, that was number four. That was number five. That was five? Yeah. Oh, I want to do a six. Well, okay. I was going to say you should talk about Patreon because the stories we just recorded before this for our Patreon were so, so good too. And we had such a fun conversation with it. So yeah. if you feel like you need more, head oh, over to Patreon. Definitely go to Patreon. And by the way, if you have not ever hit the subscribe button, hit it, hit, hit it, that hit baby, it, because it, that it. really does help us too. Hit it. And it keeps us all going. Yeah. So we look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, the OPs that we've said, you got to keep us up to date. Updated. We have a separate link in the description for our episodes for an update form makes it easier for us to find. So be sure to click that and send your update in there. I got one more for you. Ooh. For our Patreons or our super Patreons or however you level it, because I have no <laughs> concept on this thing. Yeah. I do know we do group session once a month. We do. November's I would just love, starting. I would love nothing more than, than these OPs to come on, introduce themselves. Give us some updates. And we can really, we can hammer it out right on, right on group. I could, would love it. It could be good. Maybe we start having people tell their problems, especially if it's like relationship ones like this. And we start doing like War of the Roses where we call the other person. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Yeah, spooky, scary. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>